Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on hymns. So today I'm talking about hymns because I've been accumulating slowly hymns over the past two weeks and I have swapped some high flying positions, tiny swaps each time into hymns because I think some of the stocks are getting out of hand, they're getting expensive and hymns for some reason is not part of that rally. And so I protect myself by doing these tiny tweaks and tiny improvements. This prevents me from ever selling out of a position because doing nothing is just too hard for me. I like stocks too much. I want to follow stocks too much and it's too hard for me to do nothing. But I've been swapping out of some high flying positions into hymns as well as a few new buys of hymns and I typically do very very tiny tiny trade maybe two or three tiny trades each week and that's that's a hobby that's that's a hobby for I think many of us on this channel the stock market is a hobby and so hymns is inexpensive right now hymns is cheap but I want to go back on the fundamentals when we look at hymns when we look at hymns we know that over the long run in general the stock market growth, the stock price growth, matches the underlying business growth. Right now, all we've had with HIMS is movement on the multiple. Well, we've had the multiple of HIMS, the price to sell is multiple, we've had it up, we've had it down, and it's very, very, very random. But the business of HIMS itself is not random. The business of HIMS um, has been very steady and very fast growing. If you look at the past three years, Hims went from 0.03 billion to 0.191 billion on a quarterly basis, each quarter, not trailing 12 months. So this is not hiding any slowdowns. Sometimes companies will give you a trailing 12 month number to hide a drop, say, between Q2 and Q3. I like to use quarterly figures. When we look at each quarter, each quarter, Hims is selling more, and the growth is very stunning, in my opinion. This is a hyper-growth stock. It fits squarely into the types of stock that I follow on this channel. In fact, if you look at the past three years, from March 2020, end of March 2020, end of March 2023, you look at this period for years, and you multiply the quarterly number here with, with the quarterly number here, you divide it, you divide this by this, you get what? You see that the revenue has grown 6.3 fold in three years. So this is a company that has 6 x its revenue in three years. And assuming a stable price to sell, assuming that Hims was a stock that had been around for a while, that had that stable price to sell. So, you know, sometimes you, when you see a stock that has been around for 10 years, you'll be like, oh, yeah, that stock on average, you know, it trades for a seven price to sell. That's something you can say. You can't do that for him because it's a new issue. But if you're, if you're being theoretical here and assume a stable price to sell, then theoretically the stock should have 6x too. Right? The price to sell sh should stay, theoretically, over the long run, roughly the same. But the market is trying to figure out what is the proper price to sell for him right now. That's why the price to sell is bouncing around irrationally, in my view. And, and, it, and it makes very little sense. And I, I hardly see any correlation here because the revenue is up only, but the stock market is all over the place. This is, this, this, this is movement. This is this is multiple multiple movement um, and you know and so you had the excitement of the SPAC and the new issues in 2021 lots of people got very excited uh, and then of course the, the end of the world happened the Fed raised rates and so all of the news was so negative and so the, the, this stock is really bouncing around and, and 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 it doesn't have it doesn't have a stable shoulder base it's it's fairly unstable but but over the long run I believe this is going to stabilize, which is why I'm 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 very happy to own Hims. I believe this will stabilize in in the long run. Hims is a company that is still growing in the high 50%. If 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 you look at what they had guided back in Q4 of 2022, they told us they tried to sandbag. They told us, well, we expect in 2023, we'll expect we expect between 39 and 43 percent growth in 2023. That's what we expect. That's what they told us. And then fast forward three months later, right when they reported in late May, when they reported their earnings, they're like, oh, okay, we are updating our guidance up, our outlook up. We're now expecting between 54 and 58 percent revenue growth. And who knows if 
give in Q2 when they report Q2 at the end of August. Who knows if they're not going to show a, oh, finally, we're expecting 65% growth in 2023, by the way. Right? This is a company that's growing in the high 50% in my view. And when I take 50%, I'm sandbagging my guidance here because there will be the law of non number that kicks in sometime. And I think this is a good way to control because I believe they'll, they'll do in the way into the high 50% revenue growth this year, maybe 60 in the 60% uh, range, 60, 70, maybe. We'll see. We'll see in August. But assuming a 50% growth in 2023, 50%, 24, 50%, 25, a flat 50%. Plain and simple, and that, that I believe that should be pretty close, because because it's more likely going to be like a sixty, like a sixty percent, and fifty five percent, and maybe a maybe a forty five percent. But anyways, um, making it very simple, what do we see? We see that right now the price to sell is a two point nine is a two point two two nine two point two nine x sells is the price right now. It's dirt cheap. It's very cheap. But if the stock doesn't move, if the stock stays the same. Then next year, it will be a 1.53x. And if the stock stays the same again, it would be a 1x. And so on and so on and so on. And is the valuation going to get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper for this stock? I don't think so. I think at some point, the multiple will stop compressing. At some point, this company will stop getting cheaper. And the market will settle on a proper price to sell for Hims, because let's remember, Hims is dirt cheap for the type of company that you get. And let me just go quickly through the type of company that you get when you're buying Hims. Now, I've called multiple times Hims, kind of jokingly, but I've said, you know, it's better than SaaS. Is Hims better than SaaS? That, that, that's subjective, uh, because of, of, of course, SaaS is a highly technical, entirely different sector. I don't want to make the, make the comparison, but but if I want to be a, a little provocative here, you know, you, you could argue, oh, it's better than SaaS. Of course, that's subjective. That's not what I'm claiming, but it's got a lot of good things. It's a, it's a business, SaaS, SaaS by the way, the SaaS business model is one of the best business models out there. Some of the best returns have been created by SaaS companies. If you look at Hims, they, they, they follow kind of that, right? They follow kind of that model. It's amazing. Like 75% gross margin, same as tech. Excellent. Long-term adjusted EBITDA. And, and, you know, I can see traditional finance people telling me, oh, adjusted EBITDA is, is, you know, bad for a whole list of reasons. I actually believe adjusted EBITDA is just fine for a company like him. So that's growing this fast. But they're guiding 25%. That's really, really high. Actually, that's that's really I, even though I typically don't look at that. I typically just look at product adoption and gross margin. But that's very high. They're going to end up with a lot of cash on their balance sheet. Ninety-five percent recurring revenue. I mean, it fluctuates between ninety and and ninety-six percent. It fluctuates, but but it's more than well over well over ninety percent recurring revenue. So so that's gold. That's gold. You can spend on marketing campaign. They're aiming for about six month spend right now. Is is a six months return on investment on your marketing spend right so so they can spend on customer acquisition and we don't know how many times how many years these customers are going to last but what if what, what if you spend you know what if you have a customer what if your average customer stays with you seven years eight years maybe even more right you can spend much more on that marketing acquisition but they are not even there yet they're not even there yet they're spending about six months they have about six months ROI on marketing spend so this is a company that's investing heavily in marketing as a lot of people are are, 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 are you know moving away from marketing because you know it's the crisis it's you know budgets are tight etc but they have more they even without the marketing they have more they have cross selling opportunities right this is a little, a little similar to to the neo banks right but the, the, the neo banks if you take a neo bank like 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 sofi one of the big theses is well they can sell a savings account and then they can sell life insurance and then they can sell a credit card that's cross selling right so when you once once they get a customer in their ecosystem they can do cross selling right if they have an if they have an ed buyer if you buy their, their 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 mints for example maybe they need a hair loss treatment or vice versa and so maybe people need treatments that are not being addressed right now so that's a lot of cross-selling opportunities as they add more products they have customers already that trust that brand that are more likely to add 
and over treatment provided by the needed. They have agility in the healthcare space. Now we have no we we have no vision as to how big this could be, but this could be really really big. Insurance usually is a major hindrance to moving fast and innovating in healthcare. They're already innovating with their compounding pharmacy. How quickly is this company going to innovate, right? That's why I say there's a lot of similarities with SaaS. It's agile like SaaS. They're a low-cost leader. They're cheaper than a lot of co-pays that you would have to pay for in your insurance. They're even better than some SaaS in the sense that the product is recession-proof, as evidenced by the revenue that keeps growing and growing and growing despite the crisis. This is this, these are products that are that are very personal that people are not willing to quit if they're not willing to stop the products, regardless of the economy. These are, these are products that are needed, and they really have this blue ocean approach to healthcare, where they're going after a, a market that doesn't exist. They're creating a new market. Market, right, this whole blue ocean strategy that means leaving the competition. The competition uses insurance, even in a virtual care space. All of the virtual care space, it goes through insurance. It has copays. It has all of that stuff. It's 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 not blue ocean, right? It's new old. This is new new. They're going after a whole new space of unaddressed issues, or at least mostly unaddressed issue. If you go on the website, you may realize it's mostly unaddressed issue. Most, for example, most men are not 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 trying to get treated because there's stigma associated with a lot of the stuff that they do. So that's a blue ocean thing. And that's wonderful. I mean, this business has a lot going for it. And so one may ask, am I getting too excited? Because I may be nearing 15 videos on, on HIMSS. Am I getting too excited? You know, what are the risks? What is the bear case? You know, is my, ex is my excitement for HIMSS too much? So I want to spend just a second talking about what I've seen on Twitter of people saying hims is bad, hims is bad, sell in sell hims, run away. Right? I just want to go really quickly. So one of one of I I think one of one of the most fair things that a bear could say against hims, but I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. I mean I haven't searched for it, but I haven't seen it uh, on my own on Twitter, is that they could claim that this is a small cap and that they don't do small cap, and then it's a matter of investing style, whether you don't do small cap or not. But 1.9 billion market cap is a small spas, a small cap, and because of that, it has this unstable price to sell, this unstable price movement, right? You have shorts, lots of shorts that, that, that go go and short hymns, and they also have what I like to call the SPAC curse, and you have a lot of people shorting SPAC ETFs because they used, they used to be a SPAC, right? Uh, they're, they don't have a strong base of shareholder, right? They're almost in no ETFs, no broad-based ETF, no broad-based ETF. No, no, I mean very few, very few. So low base of institutional in, in investor, which means the stocks is volatile. More retail investor, which may also mean that the stock is more 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 volatile. So so they are they 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 have the issue of newness. They have they have what 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 we would call the liability of newness uh, being a new issue. And that's a risk. And that's a risk. And that risk is fine by me. And you control that risk for through, through diversification, for proper diversification. At least that's how I view it. That's how I control that that risk. And also, risk is a is a is a longer conversation, right? It all depends on your age. If someone is 18 years old, really the risk is 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 not as high as if someone is 60, right? So so position sizing is a way is is a is the way that you would look at risk. And of course, if you're younger, well, okay, it doesn't work out. Eh, that's okay. You have time to buy new stocks in the future. Any, anyways, topic for another video. But there's a big side to a small cap. There's a big side, big upside to the small cap is that uh, you can become a, a ten bagger much more realistically. And if you're trying to seek a stock, for example, that becomes a hundred bagger, one hundred baggers, a one hundred x, it's almost impossible if you don't deal with a small cap. You have to deal with a small cap to do a hundred x. You have to be buying heavily in a small cap to do 100x that's the only way that's the only way so 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 again but 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 for him you know 1.9 billion could this company be 19 billion dollar not too far from now 
I, I, I don't. I really don't think it's that far fetched. I really don't think it's that far fetched. If if that growth rate continues, if that name continues, uh, if if people are becoming more and more familiar with a product, I do not believe it is that far fetched. Um, but again, no investment advice. This is just what I do. So I I think this is a very valid thing that Bear could say. But that's fine by me. That risk. Things I've seen over what I call bears bears say oh the insiders are selling and by the way and this is a recurring theme i've noticed on the channel is that you know whenever someone um um you know dismisses a stock it's it's an easy one that comes to mind because you can pull up any you can type any ticker symbol on open insider you can use different website but on open insider you type any any ticker symbol you'll find someone who's selling and then you can say oh they're selling look it's bad um, I don't think it's bad. I'm fine with that. Look at the delta on Dudum's latest sells. Andrew Dudum's la latest sell, um, um, right? That, that wasn't that was yesterday. Uh, on I mean, filed yesterday on 606. Trade date was 602. Anyways, uh, he sold eighteen thousand dollars. He sold eighteen thousand dollars. The delta on his ownership, when you round it. That's that's zero percent. But I mean, I, his position as a cha hasn't changed. He's still a ten percent owner. Like like. Uh, anyways, it's not you know it's 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 not meaningful. It's it's it's, it's just not. I, I don't think it's meaningful for for a company, like, for for an investor like like Dudum to sell, you know, so little so little stock. And even even if he sold a little more, that's not really a signal. Um, or at least it's a weak signal. It's a weak signal, and and I'll make a full video about insiders and my view on insiders because because insiders are subject to biases as well, just like regular regular shareholders. You know, you may have a CEO and they think they're the best. You know, I'm the best CEO out there, and they put all their savings into their stock, and then it turns out the information they have inside is not that good, right? They have their own biases. I, I really don't read too much. Um, in those insider sells and insider buys, you know, I really don't read too much. And and then you, you you have you have the issue like you see a lot of there's a lot of headlines about about insiders and someone will write uh, something very clever like they say oh someone always knows or or oh there's there's a lot of trading information it's very clever but they they don't show you the survivor bias right there's a lot of survivor bias hey, they only show you the trades that I've walked they only show you when an insider did something and it worked out in their favor. That's the only thing they show you. They don't show you all of the insiders that bought and nothing happened, that bought and it went down. They don't show you that because it doesn't it doesn't draw clicks. So insiders to me to me it's a weak signal. I understand that some people love to look at insider sales. There's even books about it. But to me I consider it a weak signal and, and but but by all means, I mean I mean if you consider a, a big signal, there's there's a little bit there's a little bit of selling selling, but remember these people like you know, like like you and me, they, they, they have expenses, they have a life, they have a house, a family. Anyways, many reasons, many reasons why people sell. The bears have said more. They've said that the CEO, Andrew Durden, the CEO, should not go on pattern to leave. And this one, this one is a little far-fetched. I mean, I, I fully disagree with that statement. Uh, they've said, oh, you know, you, when, you, when, you're, when you lead a company, you, you need to absolutely um, not go on pattern to leave. I think this is a little, little far-fetched because when you, when you really look at it, he did not leave the company. Um, all right, this is something that was said on the conference call that he's gonna, not going to be in the Q&A because of his pattern to leave. But that's that's fine. Like the, 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 the Q&A, I mean, this is a personal opinion, but rarely do I find questions from traditional analysts relevant in the Q&A. Like I said before, sometimes a simple search, a simple online search gives you the answer to that question. Like to me, the, the more important part of a conference call to me, to me, is the prepared remarks, and he did the prepared remarks. So we have a CEO at the helm, but you know he, he's taking some time off on paternity leave. I, I, I really don't have a problem with that. And for I, do, I usually don't reason by anecdotes, but but a lot a lot of people do, right? I mean, insider selling is kind is is, is is kind of a form of reasoning by anecdotes. If one reasons by anecdotes, don't forget. But you have a lot of CEOs 
that have taken a lot of paternity leaves and that have had a lot of kids and whose stock has been doing really well. A famous one is, is Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. I think the impact of paternity leave is really, really neutral. Um, I could, I, I could, in fact, make a case that uh, it gives you a more long-term oriented CEO. But the, the point is, this this shouldn't be brought up by the bears. I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even think it's fair. Um, anyways, moving on. Um, the, the another thing is that the bears have brought up is what? Well, they've brought up the fact uh, that the, well, I'll summarize it in, 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 in that, that sentence, reviews are bad, you can't cancel. That's what they've, they've, they've said and they keep keep saying. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at it. I've looked at it multiple times, but I'm looking at it with an open mind. So first of all, I believe that the best reviews are those that are left where the sale takes place. The sale does not take place on businesses whose main business is to publish reviews and, you know, kind of, quote-unquote, own businesses through their reviews, right? More, a most famous example of that is Yelp. Yelp, uh, I, I, I think, has a very improper way of doing reviews. Review-only sites, I believe... Uh, I, I don't I, I don't like vo I don't like to use those as much in in my view I, I believe reading experiences from real customers who are verified who actually bought the product or used the app is the best way to go and when I look at that when I look at those real customers and their experience I see good things I see outstanding things the App Store, for example, is a 4.8. That's very high with 10,000 reviews. So that's very high. And that's where they sell treatments, right? They sell treatments, many treatments, most treatments for their app. So they, these are very solid reviews, right? And when it comes to Amazon, I, th I think we have a, a very interesting um, a sample of what people of their, think of their product. If you look on Amazon, if you if you follow Hims, you know that the, the, their shampoo line has had what they've called an unexpected success. Because if you follow Hims, you know that a lot of products that Hims sells in retail is kind of advertising. They do it as advertising. We're like, oh, we have a presence in store. We have a presence on that website that's advertising. Well, they've had, quote unquote, unexpected success on their shampoo, sold a lot of shampoo. The shampoo apparently is really good. But if you, re if you read the reviews, you can see they're very, very, very high reviews, very high. And of course, whenever you move to a website whose business is to publish reviews, you're going to have lower reviews. And there's multiple reasons for that. One of the reasons that oftentimes, and I'm not claiming this is this is a true for trust pilot, by the way, but this is definitely the case for Yelp. Oftentimes, you'll have reviews that are not recommended. And when a review is not recommended, it's not counted in the total. And, and of course, you, you have an easy, easy time guessing which review is never going to be recommended. Right. Typically, high reviews are not recommended by by businesses whose business it is to do review and whose business it is to rank. Right. You can have you, you can have a, 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 an industry with a lot of companies that are absolutely outstanding. But review sites is going to try to compare and be like, this one is a little better, is a little better, is a little, is a little better. Anyways, the point is, it's just me. I personally take those with a grain of salt. First of all, because there's way fewer reviews, right? Ten, one order of magnitude less in the case of, of Trustpilot here, which is the one I've seen online. And another one is, 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 and I've seen screenshots of that, is you need to be careful because sometimes you'll have screen, screenshot of people who, who just who just screenshot the one star. So you just go ahead and you select one star and then you do a screenshot. And then you say, oh, look, Hims, Hims has really, really, really awful re reviews. Well, first of all, the one star reviews are two orders of magnitude less than the App Store reviews alone, right? You're dealing with, with 100-ish reviews compared to 10,000, that's, that's first of all. And then, and then, and then second of all, you need to read those reviews, which I, which I have done. You know, I have an open mind. I'm reading the reviews. Okay, so it's tough to cancel. Well, they probably need to work on that. Uh, they, 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 they probably need to, to, to work on that. I, I don't know who in a user experience at Hims deals with, with canceling. They probably do need to work on that. I can tell you one thing is whenever I get a recur recurring subscription to anything, 
it is always tough to cancel. It is always tough to cancel. If you have Sirius XM on your car, have you ever tried to cancel Sirius XM? So there may be a lot of, of, of legacy business practice going on in there. Uh, this is clearly something they need to work on. But when I read the reviews, yeah, people complain, no, oh, it's tough to cancel, etc. But, but they're still able to cancel. They're still able to cancel. You know, like if I spend two hours on the phone with Sirius XM, I'm sure I'd be able to cancel it. Anyways, I don't, I don't care. It's five bucks a month. But the point, the point, the, 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 the point is, yes, it's 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 a, it's a minor it's a minor negative. They need to make it easier. I'm sure they will. Now, I have read the replies on Hims, and whenever there's someone reports that, there's there's someone contacting them back and saying, yes, yes, we're helping you out. We're dealing with it, which is the proper way, which is the proper way to 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 do it. Uh, you know, try try to um, try to cancel a Facebook account. It's anyways. I'm not. I'm not saying this is this is right. They should make it easier. But I'm. 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 I'm just saying. I. I think. I think this is a minor negative, not a major negative, uh, because people can cancel. Because people can cancel. And, and and you know, if you live in the U.S., you 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 probably know that it's very easy to call your credit card company and be like, you know, I'm canceling this. It's very easy to do that. So, anyways, that's point number one. Point number two. And again, this is these two are kind of a mode. I mean, it was technically only one mode, but these two are the, the most often observations I've seen in, in the very negative reviews is, is oh, they're pill pushers. Well, I think this is a more ideological point in, 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 in my view, um, because they do have a skip option and you can skip the product. But let's say, you know, let's say you're going on vacation, you're going to be like three weeks away from home and you still receive the pills. Well, yeah, you're gonna have too many pills because you forgot to take your pills on a trip and then your pills just sit there and they send you another thing of pill and it's very easy for you to get that, that, get that feeling. If you, do, if you do subscribe and save on Amazon, um, you, you'll notice sometimes Amazon will, will send you your subscribe and save and you're not fully done with a product that you had. For example, I, I, I subscribe to coffee pods and sometimes I have too many coffee pods, but then sometimes I have family over and I, have, I don't have enough. I don't, know if, I don't know if that makes any sense but the fact that they, they, they use the term pill, pill pushers, I think, has more to do with, with the type of the product. Yeah, subscription, sometimes you get too much. Yeah, some, sometimes you get too much. Sometimes, you know, you pay for, for, for something, you get a little too much. That's that's the nature of the subscription. Um, I I don't think it's fair to use the term pill, pill pusher. I don't think it's fair because they have the skip option. Um, but that's just me. You could you 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 could say it's it's a negative, and and I, I'm I'm highlighting it. I'm highlighting the negatives. The last one, and I'll finish the video with this. The last negative that bears have pointed out is bears have said what they said. They need to sell Ozempic and Munjaro, and and I think there's a few other ones, but I, I don't follow the space of weight loss uh, at, at at least very much. Uh, they need to sell Ozempic. They need to sell o o o Munjaro, and so and so people are like, oh. Hims is losing losing its spot because there's companies that are already selling Munjaro for 200 bucks a shot, and they're taking the, the the entire market. So so Hims is losing money on the table. I have a few things to say about that. Uh, um, well, first of all, we have to realize that the, the weight loss discussion and the, the Munjaro and Ozempic discussion has to do with a TikTok craze. Uh, you know, it, it blew up on social media. There has been many shortages, uh, many, many, many issues with that. Uh, one of the, one of the bigger issues that I'd say is that is that it may not fit as much as people think in their long term care category in the sense that this is a product that you're going to use a few times and, and you're not going to use it again and and I but I think that's a minor that, that's 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 a minor issue they sell products that are that are single use or use twice or use three times they sell those products that's fine uh, I think the bigger issue is that it's it's not a product that's designed for weight loss. It's a product. These products are designed for people with diabetes, and we don't have much of a look back. I mean, granted, Viagra was not was not intended for what it's used for, but these drugs are, are very old. They're, they're tens and tens of years old. Same for 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 Rogaine, which is for for air loss. So we have a lot of look back on these older drugs that that him sells, and they're tried and true, and 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 and, and they're fine. This we 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 don't have too much of a look back on, on on taking ozempic when someone doesn't have diabetes um you know these labs may may issue a 
drug that specifically, and these are injections, by the way, that are specifically done for weight loss. They may do that in the future, and that may be more safe. I think it's nice that they're prudent. Also, there are serious ethics issues and potentially PR issues. Um, and, 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 and that is because they, they run out, right? These products run out, uh, and, and therefore, do you remember the headlines a few months ago, very sad headlines who people who, who, who couldn't get that drug and that, that drug is, is, is needed to live. And they couldn't get that drug because there, there were people on TikTok promoting the product. Anyways, um, so I think it's, 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 it's a very, very good thing that, that HIMSS is, is not rushing into this. HIMSS is acting ethically. Waiting and seeing is the right approach. They have enormous growth elsewhere right now, and they can afford to wait. And they said they were looking into it, but rushing things in that in that area, I don't think is the way to, way to go. Lastly, I'll finish Ozempic and Mojaro. It's not exactly cheap. Hims is known for lower costs uh, type of care outside of insurance, preventative health. This is not really cheap. This is this is fairly expensive if you, if you if you if you ask me. Um, therefore, I'm glad they're not moving too fast. But I realize this is something the bears say. And so, uh, if you're tr- looking to invest uh, in a stock that's gonna do well because of uh, weight loss injections, maybe maybe Hims is not the right stock uh, to to look at. Anyways, um, if you have more bear arguments. Please tell me, uh, and 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 I, I will look into them. I mean, I mean, it's it's very helpful for for me to 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 study my thesis with the arguments uh, that I hear here and there. This is not investment advice, not at all. This is just entertainment. I try to entertain and only entertain on this channel. No investment advice whatsoever. I appreciate your likes. I appreciate your subscribes. I'm still on uh, vacation. It's uh, I miss I miss I miss you all. I miss doing this, but still on vacation. Thank you very much. And and have a wonderful day.